Good afternoon. Welcome. Uh, subject matter is talking about uh, building British business. So uh, we'll try and keep that with an eye on what we're doing here. When we build business, we make use of technology. This goes involved in lots and lots of subject matter, like collaboration, making the world a smaller place. For those who don't know, we carry some like a third of the internet's traffic. So we see a lot of things happening across the globe. Many businesses, small, medium or large, just won't operate anymore if the internet stopped. So think about a terrorist threat that, stopped, that took the internet down, many businesses just won't be working again. And as we move forward, one of the other big subjects we talked about in IT these days is to think of the internet of everything or the internet of things. Today is not our messaging for the internet of everything, but simplistically, if you have any comprehension of what the internet does, brings the world, makes it a smaller place, means that information is available at fingertips, and now expand that out. Think about all of us being implanted with a chip that uh, gives our medical details uh, back to our physician, what's happening with their insulin levels, what's happening with our blood pressure in real time. Think about every vehicle being connected, so when you drive through the city of London, the traffic lights change accordingly. We're already doing that in Barcelona, by the way. So they're connected cities. Just think about a whole world being connected, the sensors communicating. And then start to think about what security concerns might be. So technology is moving forward, and the danger of cyber security is we need to protect ourselves. We need to take it more seriously. Every single one of us needs to take it more seriously. And a lot of this is to do with human behavior. So I'm gonna go through a presentation relatively quickly. You'll be pleased to hear not uh, too involved in technology. And we're gonna kind of focus on the threats that are out there at the moment, and uh, maybe some thoughts. So there's a question generally we ask an audience, and um, people think IT security or cyber security is about stopping things happening. The world's moved on. One of the messages here is every single organisation is being attacked. Most organisations are being breached. Most organisations don't know they've actually been breached. What does a breach mean? It means someone horrible is trying to do something. They're stealing data, they're stealing credit card information, they're stealing IP. They're not there for the fun of it. They're doing bad stuff and they're probably doing it right now. So if we look over the past, in old pictures, it's actually Connorsburg Castle uh, in the north of England. If we look at this diagram, we can see how we protect ourselves, maybe back in the Middle Ages. So if I was attacking this castle, and I've got uh, spears, swords, whatever else it might be, I'm probably not going to get in. If I've got a marauding army, there's a huge great moat around that's going to stop it. Okay, it's secure. Move forward a couple of centuries, and now I've got uh, tanks, I've got artillery that can blast those walls down. I've got a new invention called aeroplanes that can go over the top. This thing just won't stand a chance of being secure in the world. The way people are protecting themselves with security products and technology is the same analogy. It no longer works. It doesn't exist. Every single one of you has probably got AV deployed on your desktops, your PCs at home and in the workplace. Leave it on there, it does part of the job. But actually, technology has moved so far that AV is almost redundant, antivirus is almost redundant on desktops. You need different layers of technology and you need to consider service providers and those who are helping you and how well they're protecting you. So this castle represents probably a fairly large organisation. But security is a concern for all of us as individuals and as large enterprises. So let me just share an example with you. There was a example called Target, a big retail customer in the US. They were breached. Loads of credit card details were stolen from their point of sale devices. US retail in particular at the moment is under huge attack. Some of the jokes that fly around the US is if you want to buy anything in a shop, don't use your credit card, pay cash, because it's going to get ripped off 100% of the time. I'm not sure that's entirely true. But the interesting thing about the Target attack is uh, the way the Target was breached. And simplistic, the way the Target was breached was they had an external supplier. The external supplier might be in one of these other exhibition halls because they're a thing called HVAC supplier. They were connected to Target. Their role in life was to reduce their utility bill. Pull the lights down, turn the heating off when people aren't in offices, control the utility bill, keep the cost down. And most large organisations are trying to be very clever about what they do with energy consumption. The green agenda, the cost agenda. What happened? Target was breached through this third party supplier who was breached. Is it bad they were breached? Yes. What were their controls like? I don't know. I don't, I don't look after them, CISCO didn't look after them. 
But what was interesting was the third party was only breached as a mechanism to get into target. And that happens time and time again. There's a very large security organisation called RSA, who some of you may use their tokens, which is authentication, so when you connect to a corporate device, you have to enter a code. A very big security company. And interesting, their response, they came out publicly when they were breached and said, we've been breached. And they imagined reputational damage for security company. They survived, they done well, great company. Brave thing to have said. The point again about RSA though, it's a big company, RSA weren't the target. The bad guys weren't actually trying to breach RSA. What they were trying to do was get code, get IP, and it's two-factor authentication, so they could get to the end customers. So people like McDonnell Douglas, big aerospace companies. Think of the value of the IP of those companies. So even if you're a small company, three, four people, ten people, you may be a target by the nature of your account. So if you've got lots and lots of money in a bank account, you might be a target. If you're storing lots of credit card detail, you might be a target. If you've got a connection to a large customer, you might be a target as a way to breach that large organisation. We need to think outside the box how we're going with this. So I spend a lot of time on this, essentially this augment kind of what I've spoken about. If people have got thoughts that hacking, cybercrime, cyber security, is a bit like that movie back in the 80s called War Games, where there's a kind of kid with a pizza box, you know, he's writing code and doing really clever stuff. Forget it. So last century. Um, there are coders who write bad code. Cybercrime is mostly criminals. There are various stats. One uh, report came out last week and actually said there are only 10 big cyber criminals in the world, but they're massive oligarchs, if you will, of the cyber criminal world, who have a whole community of bad people doing things for them. So if your credit card details are stolen, why would someone steal them? They could use them badly. It's most likely they're harvesting, they'll probably collect 1,000, 10,000 credit card details and sell them. If you want to know where to sell them, Google sell credit card details. You'll find plenty of people willing to buy them. They'll give you a price per card. The price you get per card, I'm trying to teach you how to be cyber criminals here, the price you get per card depends how rich the data is. The more fields of data you collect, the more value it's got. So if I'm stealing credit card data, I don't have to do anything with it. I can just sell it to somebody else. And then there are virtual communities where people have got matters of forethought who will buy those credit card details they'll buy a product, a security, bad security product online. If you want to inflict a security attack on someone, you don't need to be a clever person writing code. Google security attack, you can buy them online. They'll come with support packages, just like a normal company. You get telephone hotline support if your attack on a big bank doesn't work. They'll help you make the attack. So relatively non-IT literate people, with malice of forethought, the guys behind cyber. But not only is it about cybercrime, this thing has advanced now into a thing called hacktivism. We've heard of organisations like Anonymous who have a political agenda. Um, those guys are really seriously impacting uh, organisations who come out with a completely different agenda that Anonymous don't agree with. There is a whole load of political activity taking place at the moment. If any of you think, don't think the UK is at war, you're wrong, we are, uh, on many, many fronts. If any of you think the world is at war, you're wrong, we are on many, many fronts. If you think about all the articles you read in the press, uh, ISIS would be uh, one at the moment. Um, I can't give you the information, I'm afraid, but I can tell you the stuff that you read in the press about bombing campaigns and all that physical stuff that's taking place. There's a lot of stuff taking place in the virtual world across the globe. So the point is, over that far end, is this security uh, attack has grown. They're very clever, sophisticated groups that are undertaking this activity. An attack, by the way, as well, doesn't happen in a moment of time. People tend to think that the bad guys write the code, sending code and trying to attack a company. Last century again. They can take a year, two years to craft an attack. They can embed code, they can put malicious uh, malware in your organisation. It could be there for two to three years before it's activated. It's doing this stuff. How do they access your corporate network? An attack you might think about. You've probably heard of things like phishing mails with a PH. So if you get an email from someone uh, that normally you respond to and understand, like it could be your bank, it could be your brother, it could be a family member, it could be someone you trust, and it says, great, click on this, this is something that interests you. So here's a photo of a nice cute kitten. If I was interested in cute kittens, which I'm not, I might be tempted to click on it. 
Recent work says that over half of 20 to 30 year olds in the UK would click on that, straight away. Older people like myself, I don't know why, perhaps we're just a bit more risk averse, uh, the percentage is lower. And it's somewhere in the high 20s that people like me, average age, would click on that mail. How do they craft that stuff? I won't ask for a show of hands because I'll embarrass people. If you're on Facebook, think about what you're putting on Facebook. If I was trying to attack you, attack your company, attack a company that's connected to your company, I would do a thing called social engineering. I would trawl across LinkedIn, Facebook, social media sites. I try and find people who work for the company that I was trying to get into. I might find you. I might find your Facebook record. On there, you've probably got pictures of yourself in your social life. You've probably got likes and dislikes. Um, I've probably got names of people you're connected with and you trust. I can craft a mail. I can craft a mail that looks like your brother from your brother's email address. It will come with his name on it. It'll have a subject matter that I know from maybe Facebook that you care about. You'll like that photo because you think it's um, from who it says it is. It's not. So just think before you click. Best way to check if you want some advice is if you get an email from someone and it looks genuine, don't click. Go back. Preferably to a URL you trust, if it's your bank, and you normally connect with your bank, get their URL, go through that. If you have to, at least Google the bank or HMRC, pick that URL, and connect back in for a completely different route. And check that the same request will be asked. Generally it's not. So it's a kind of two-factor check, basically. So the world's moved, it's got more complicated. And in organisations, what we've done, and this is medium to large enterprises, even small enterprises, we deploy technology. So the last 10, 20 years, we put a, we put a solution in. There's a threat. Many years ago, we used to think it was all about viruses being distributed. So we put antivirus on our PCs and desktops. There was a lot, some way of stopping it. And a little bit more recently, 10 years or so ago, most people might have heard of a thing called a firewall. So if you think about the physical perimeter around your building, you put a firewall there, which is outside your network, is at the perimeter. That allowed some things through, and something's not coming back the other way. It was a defence. I think all the firewalling, not much wrong with AV, but it could have been and So what we did was deploy different technologies, and then we all get clever in the technology world. So we start to build processes and systems and things around it, how we can control them and make them a little bit more alive. So we start providing management of these things. And that's cool. And then what do we do? What situation do we find ourselves in then? We find our situations in a multiplicity of lots, a multiplicity of products go to a medium to large size enterprise, it is very typical to find at least 40 and up to 80 different products from different vendors. You could think about a technology world, the technology world does not work on multiple bits of technology. How does an individual get data from 80 different clients and 80 different solution sets? They have to know those product sets, they have to have 80 different management consoles at a time when people are trying to trim down their IT resources. A small enterprise hasn't got a hope in health. They've got one or just a few amount of people looking after IT. Let alone security, we can't handle this. This is a nightmare. This is the current world we live in. And all this is set for change. So I'm going to try and talk about how that change might occur. So this is basically looking at uh, malware. and some stats on malware. And um, as you can see, um, breaches occur really, really quickly. Data gets ripped out of organisations within a matter of hours. We were in a very large global household name in the UK. I mean, full of six, if I could tell you who it was, and go, my God. Um, and we had some consultants in there doing some work with them uh, about a month ago. And the consultants uh, picked their phone up to me and said, Terry, we've got a problem. I said, great, my problems, what's the problem? Mr. Household Name is breached. I said, okay, tell me something I don't know. They've been breached, and they've been breached for the last six months. Their IP, intellectual property, is flowing out of the organisation. This is a major leading manufacturing organisation. Their whole assets, their whole values are about IP. If that information, even if the information leaked out, it would have a major impact on their stock price. Obviously we have encryption and rules and stuff about how we talk about things internally. Um, they weren't aware. So when we phoned the customer, first of all they didn't believe us. Second time they didn't believe us. Then they spoke to their very, very large global outsourcing partner who were responsible for security, who first of all didn't believe us, and then secondly said, yeah, we know about that. It's three laptops in encrypted, we're quarantined and we know what we're doing. And we're saying, no, 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 no. 
it's much bigger. Cut a long story short, eventually everyone did realise what was going on. But even large organisations, because of that multiplicity of products, aren't clear on what's going on and can't protect themselves. When you looked at some of the information they were getting at the tools they had deployed, some of the information was appropriate, but it was getting lost in a whole mass of alarms and events that were going on, so no one actually saw it. 